ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, welcome to the Singapore Convention on Mediation Reading Breakfast Ceremony. Today, the Saturday, 12th day of September 2020, when the Singa Singapore Convention comes into force. We commence uh, with the words of the national anthem, Kenyan national anthem recited in English. O oh God of all creation, bless this our land and nation. Justice be our shield and defender. May we dwell in unity, peace, and liberty. Plenty be found within our borders. We will commence our reading. Welcome, Wangari. Uh, Wangari, you are muted. Kindly unmute. Wangare, uh, Wangare, uh, could you kindly uh, work on the volume? It's Slash 
Seven three plus one nine eight United Nations Convention on International Settlement of Land, resulting from mediation. The content. General Assembly Resolution seventy three plus one nine eight page one. United Nations Convention on International Settlement Agreement resulting from mediation. Page two. Preamble, page two. Article one, scope of application, page two. Article two, information, page four. Article two, general principles, page five. Article four, requirements for reliance on settlement agreement, page five. Ground, article six. Ground for refusing to grant relief, page 6. Article 6. Parallel applications or claims, page 7. Article 7. Other laws or treaties, page 7. Article 9. Effects of settlement agreement, page 8. Article 10. Depository, page 8. Article 11. Signature, ratification, acceptance, approval, caution, page 8. Article 12, distinction by regional economic integration organization, page 9. Article 13, non unified legal system, page 9. Article 15, entry into force, page 10. Article 15, amendment, page 10. Article 16, denunciation, page 11. Resolution adopted by the General Assembly on 20th December 2018 on the report of the Sixth Committee A plus 72 A plus 72 plus 496. Mediator Sarah Hare, can you hear me? Uh, yes, Wangare, uh, I can hear you. However, the volume is really low. If you could increase the volume, it would be great. Yes. You can see resolution adopted by the General Assembly on 20th December 2018 on the report of the Sixth Committee A plus 70 plus 496. 7198 United Nations Convention on International Settlement Agreement resulting from mediation. The General Assembly. Recalling its resolution 2205, that is XXI, of 17 December 1966, by which it established the National Commission on International Trade Law with a mandate to further the progressive harmonization and unification of the law of international trade and in that respect. Bear in mind the interests of all people, in particular those of developing countries in the extensive development of international trade. Recalling also its resolution 57 plus 18 of 19 November 2002 in which it noted the adoption of by the Commission of the Model Law of, on International Commercial Conciliation and expressed the conviction that the Model Law, together with the conciliation views of the Commission, recommended in its resolution 35 plus 5 p of 4 December 1980 contribute significantly to the establishment of a harmonized legal framework for the fair and efficient settlement of disputes arising in international commercial uh, relations. Recognizing the value of mediation as a method of amicably settling disputes arising in the context of international commercial relations, convinced that the adoption of a convention on international settlement agreement resulting from mediation that is acceptable to states with different legal, social, and economic systems 
would complement the existing legal framework on international mediation and contribute to the development of harmonious international economic relations. Notably, that the decision of the Commission concurrently to chair a convention on international settlement agreement resulting from mediation and an amendment of the modern law on international commercial reconciliation was intended to accommodate the different levels of experience with mediation in different jurisdictions and to provide states with consistent standards on the cross border enforcement of international settlement agreements resulting from mediation, without creating any expectation that interested states may adopt either instrument. Noting the satisfaction that the preparation of the draft convention was a subject of due deliberation and that the draft convention benefited from consultations with governments as well as intergovernmental and non governmental organizations, taking note of the position of the Commission at its 51st session to submit the draft convention to the General Assembly for its consideration. Taking note with satisfaction of the draft convention approved by the Commission. Expressing its appreciation to the Government of Singapore for its effort to hold a signing ceremony for the Convention in Singapore. One, commend the United Nations Commission on International Trade Law for preparing the draft Convention on International Settlement Agreement resulting from mediation. Two, adapt, adopt the United Nations Convention on International Settlement Agreement resulting from mediation contained in the Annex to the present resolution. C. Authorizes a ceremony for the opening of signature, the signature of the convention to be held in Singapore on 7 August 2018 and recommends the convention be known as the Singapore Convention on Mediation. Four. Calls upon the government and regional economic integration organizations that wish to strengthen the legal framework on international dispute settlement to consider becoming a party to the Convention. United Nations Convention on International Settlement Agreement resulting from mediation. Preamble. The parties to this convention, recognizing the value for the international trade of mediation as a method of settling commercial disputes in which the parties in dispute request a third person or persons to assist them in their attempt to settle the dispute amicably, noting that mediation is increasingly used in international and domestic commercial practice as an alternative to litigation, considering that the use of mediation results in significant benefits such as reducing the instances where a dispute leads to the termination of a commercial relationship, facilitating the administration of international transactions by commercial parties, and producing savings in the administration of justice by states. Convinced that the use of mediation results in significant benefits, such as reducing the instances where a dispute leads to the termination of a commercial Convinced that the establishment of a framework for international settlement agreements resulting from mediation that is acceptable to states with different legal, social, and economic systems would contribute to the development of harmonious international economic relations, have agreed as follows. Article 1 Scope of Application This convention applies to an agreement resulting from mediation and concluded in writing by parties to resolve a commercial dispute in brackets settlement agreement, which at the time of its conclusion is international in that A. At least two parties to the settlement agreement have their place of business in different states, or B. The settlement agreement in which the parties to the settlement agreement have their place of business is different from either numeral one, the state in which a substantial part of the obligation.
obligation under the settlement agreement is to pay, or C, the state with which the subject matter of the settlement agreement is most closely connected. Number two, this convention does not apply to settlement agreements, A, concluded to resolve a dispute arising from transactions engaged in by the party by one of the parties, opening brackets, a consumer, the personal, family, or household subject. B, relating to family inheritance or employment law. Number three, this convention does not apply to A, settlement agreements, one, that have been approved by a court or concluded in the course of proceedings before a court, and two, that are enforced as a judgment in the state of that court. Three B, settlement agreements that have been recorded and are enforceable as an additional award. Article two, definition. For the purpose of Article one, paragraph one, A, if a party has more than one place of business, the relevant place of business is that which has the closest relationship to the dispute resolved by the settlement agreement, having regard to the circumstances known to or contemplated by the party at the time of the conclusion of the settlement agreement. B. If a party does not have a place of business, reference should be, should be made to the party's virtual residence. Number two, a settlement agreement is in writing if its content is recorded in any form. The requirement that a settlement agreement be in writing is met by an electronic communication if the information contained therein is accessible so as to be reusable for subsequent reference. Number three, mediation is a process irrespective of the expression used or the basis upon which the process is carried out, whereby parties attempt to reach an amicable settlement of their dispute with the assistance of a third person or person, opening brackets, the mediator, closing brackets, lacking the authority to impose a solution upon the parties to the dispute. I invite young Lydia Samanda to take us to Article 2. Thank you. So I'll continue from Article 3. I hope you can hear me clearly. Article 3, General Principles, Subsection 1. Each party to the Convention shall enforce a settlement agreement in accordance with its rules or procedure and under the conditions laid down in this Convention. Subarticle 2. If a dispute arises concerning a matter that a party claims was already resolved, that was already, sorry, if a dispute arises concerning a matter that a party claims was already resolved by a settlement agreement, a party to the convention shall allow the party to invoke the settlement agreement in accordance with its rules of procedure and under the conditions laid down in this convention in order to prove that the matter has already been resolved. Article 4, requirements for, for reliance on settlement agreements. Sub-article 1, a party relying on a settlement agreement under this convention shall supply to the competent authority of the party to the convention where relief is sought, A, the settlement agreement signed by the parties, B, evidence that the settlement agreement resulted from mediation such as, such as 1, uh, medi the mediator's signature on the settlement agreement. Two, a document signed by the mediator indicating that the mediation was carried out. Three, an attestation by the institution that administered the mediation. Or four, in the absence of one, two, or three, any other evidence acceptable to the competent authority. Subsection two. Um, the requirement, that this, the requirement that a settlement agreement shall be signed by the parties or where applicable, the mediator is met, is met in relation to an electronic communication if A, the method is used to identify the parties or the mediator 
or the mediator and to indicate the party's or mediator's intention uh, the mediator's intent sorry to indicate the party's or mediator's intention in respect of the information contained in the electronic in the electronic communication and b the method used is either one as reliable as appropriate for the purpose for which the electronic communication was generated or communicated um, in the light of in the light of all the circumstances including any relevant agreement or two proven in fact to have fulfilled the functions described by subparagraph a above by itself or together with future with further evidence so, sub article 3 if the settlement agreement is not in if the settlement agreement is not in an official language of the party to the convention where relief is sought the competent authority may request a translation thereof into such language sub article 4 the competent authority may require any necessary document in order to verify that the requirements of the convention have been complied with sub article 5 when considering the request for relief the competent authority shall act expeditiously article 5 grounds for refusing grant grounds for refusing gr grounds for refusing to grant relief um, sub article 1 the competent authority of the party to the convention where relief is sought under article 4 may refuse to grant relief at the request of the party against whom the relief is sought only if that party furnishes the competent authority proof that a a party to the settlement agreement was under some incapacity b the settlement agreement sought to be relied upon one is null and void inoperative or incapable of being performed under the law to which the parties have validly subjected it have validly subjected it or failing in indication thereof under the law deemed applicable by the competent authority of the party to the convention where relief is sought under article 4 2 is not binding or is not final according to its terms or three has been subsequently modified c part c the obligation in the settlement agreement one have been performed or two are not clear or comprehensible d granting relief would be contrary to the terms of the settlement agreement e there was a serious breach of the mediator of standards of, applic of standards applicable to the mediator or the mediation without which breach the party would not have entered into the settlement agreement or f there was a failure by the mediator to disclose to the parties the to the party circumstances that are that raise justifiable doubts as to the mediator's impartiality or independence and such failure to disclose had a material impact or undue influence on a party without which failure that without which failure that party would not have entered into the settlement agreement. Sub article two, the competent authority of the party to the convention where relief is sought under article four may also refuse to grant relief if it finds that A, granting relief would be contrary to the public policy of that party or B, the subject matter of the dispute is not capable of settlement by mediation under the law of that party. I'll invite the next um, the next reader. Hi, I my name is Terry. I hope you can hear me. Yes, Terry, we can hear you. Please proceed. All right. Article six: Parallel applications of or claims. If an application or a claim relating to a settlement agreement has been made to a court, an arbitral tribunal or any other competent authority which may affect the relief being sought under Article 4, the competent, competent authority of the party to the convention where such relief is sought may, if it considers it proper, adjourn the decision and may also, on the request of a party, order the other party to give suitable security.
Article 7, other laws or treaties. This convention shall not deprive any interested parties of any right. It may have to avail itself of a settlement agreement in the manner in the manner and to the extent allowed by the law or the treaties of the party to the convention where such settlement agreement is sought to be relied upon. Article 8, reservations. One, a party to the convention may declare that A, it shall not apply this convention to settlement agreements to which it is a party or to which any government, governmental agencies or any person not person acting on behalf of a government agency is a part to the extent specified in the declaration. B, it shall apply this convention only to the extent that the parties to the settlement agreement have agreed to the application of the convention. Number two, no reservations are permitted except those expressly authorized in this article. Number three, reservations may be under by a party to the convention at any time. Reservations made at the time of signatures shall be subject to confirmation upon ratification, acceptance, or approval. Such reservations shall take effect simultaneously with the entry into force of this convention in respect of the party to the convention concerned. Reservations made at that time of ratification, acceptance, or approval of this convention or a session thereto, or at the time of making a declaration under Article 13 shall take effect simultaneously with the effect entry into force of this convention in respect of the party to the convention concerned. Reservations deposited after the entry into force of the convention for that party to the convention shall take effect six months after the date of the deposit. Four, reservations and their confirmation shall be deposited with the depository. Five, any party to the convention shall make that makes a reservation under this convention may withdraw in it at any time. Such withdrawals are to be deposited with the depository and shall take effect six months after deposit. Article nine. Effect on settlement agreements. The convention and any reservation or withdrawal thereof shall apply only to settlement agreements concluded after the date when the convention, reservation or withdrawal thereof enters into force for the party to the convention concerned. Article 10, depository. The Secretary General of the United Nations is hereby designated as the depository of the convention. Article 11, signature, ratification, acceptance, approval, accession. One, this convention is open for the signature by all states in Singapore on 7 August 2019 and thereafter at United States headquarters in New York. Two, this convention is subject to ratification, acceptance, or approval by the signatories. Three, this convention is open for accession by all states that are not signatories as from the date it is open for signature. Four, instruments of ratification, acceptance, approval, or accession are to be deposited with the depository. I hand over to the next reader, thank you. Article 12, participation by regional economic integration organizations. One, a regional economic integration organization that is constituted by sovereign states and has competence over certain matters governed by this convention may similarly sign, ratify, accept, approve, or accede to this convention. The regional economic integration organization shall in that case have the rights and obligations of a party to the convention to the extent that that organization has competence over matters governed by this convention. Where the number of parties to this, where the number of parties to the convention is relevant in this convention, the regional economic integration organization shall not count as a party to the convention in addition to its member states that are parties to the convention. Two, the Regional Economic Integration Organization shall, at the time of signature, ratification, acceptance, approval or accession, make a declaration to the depository 
specifying the matters governed by this convention in respect of which competence has been transferred to that organization by its member states. The Regional Economic Integration Organization shall promptly notify the de de depository of any changes to the distribution of competence, including new transfers of competence specified in the declaration under this paragraph. Three, any reference to a party to the convention, parties to the convention, a state or states in this convention applies equally to a regional economic integration organization where the context so requires. Four, this convention shall not prevail over conflicting rules of a regional economic integration organization, whether such rules were adopted or entered into force before or after this convention. A, if under Article 4, relief is sought in a state that is member of such an organization and all the states relevant under Article 1, Paragraph 1, are members of such an organization, or B, as concerns the recognition or enforcement of judgments between member, member states of such an organization. Article 13, non-unified legal systems. One, if a party to the convention has two or more territorial units in which different systems of law are applicable in relation to the matters dealt with in this convention, it may at the time of signature, ratification, acceptance, approval or accession, declare that this convention is to extend to all its territorial units or only to one or more of them and may amend its declaration by submitting another declaration at any time. Two, these declarations are to be notified to the depository and are to state expressly the territorial units to which the convention extends. Three, if a party to the convention has two or more territorial units in which different systems of law are applicable in relation to the matters dealt with in this convention, A, any reference to the law or rule of procedure of a state shall be construed as referring, where appropriate, to the law or rule of procedure in force in the relevant territorial unit. B, any reference to the place of business in a state shall be construed as referring, where appropriate, to the place of business in the relevant territorial unit. C, any reference to the competent authority of the state shall be construed as referring where appropriate to the competent authority in the relevant territorial unit. Four, if a party to the convention makes no declaration under paragraph one of this article, the convention is to extend to all territorial units of that state. Article 14, entry into force. One, this convention shall enter into force six months after deposit of the third instrument of ratification, acceptance, approval, or accession. Two, when a state ratifies, accepts, approves, or accedes to this convention, after the deposit of the third instrument of ratification, acceptance, approval, or accession, this convention, this convention shall enter into force in respect of that state six months after the date of the deposit of its in instrument of ratification, acceptance, approval, or accession. The convention shall enter into force for a territorial unit to which this convention has been extended in accordance with Article 13, six months after the notification of the declaration referred to in that article. Article 15, amendment. 
One, any party to the convention may propose an amendment to the present convention by submitting it to the Secretary General of the United Nations. The Secretary General shall thereupon communicate the proposed amendment to the parties to the convention with a request that they indicate whether they favor a conference of parties to the convention for the purpose of considering and voting upon the proposal. In the event that within four months from the date of such communication, at least one third of the parties to the convention favor such a conference, the Secretary General shall convene the conference under the auspices of the United Nations. Two, the conference of parties to the convention shall make every effort to achieve consensus on each amendment. If all efforts at consensus are exhausted and no consensus is reached, the amendment shall, as a last resort, require for its adoption a two-thirds majority vote of the parties to the convention present and voting at the conference. Three, an adopted amendment shall be submitted by the depository to all the parties to the convention for ratification, acceptance, or approval. Four, an adopted amendment shall enter into force six months after the date of deposit of the third instrument of ratification, acceptance, or approval. When an amendment enters into force, it shall be binding on those parties to the convention that have expressed consent to be bound by it. Five, when a party to the convention ratifies, accepts, or approves an amendment following the deposit of the third instrument of ratification, acceptance, or approval, the amendment shall enter into force in respect of that party to the convention six months after the date of the deposit of its instrument of ratification, acceptance, or approval. Mangari? A party to the convention may denounce this convention by a formal notification in writing addressed to the depository. The denunciation may be limited to a certain, to certain territory limit of a non unified legal system to which this convention applies. The denunciation shall take effect 12 months after the notification is received by the depository, where a longer period for the denunciation to take effect is specified in the notification. The denunciation shall take effect upon the expiration of such longer period after the notification is received by the depository. The convention shall continue to apply to settlement agreements concluded before the denunciation takes effect. Done in single original, of which the Arabic, Chinese, English, French, Russian, and Spanish texts are equally authentic. The button is G19-002. One, Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the reading of the international, United Nations Convention on the International Settlement Agreement resulting from mediation. I wish to thank you for joining us for this Nairobi uh, reading breakfast ceremony uh, of the Singapore Convention on Mediation, and we invite all the colleagues to log into the Singapore Convention uh, 
the next month to be able to join the Singapore ceremony. Um, uh, thank you, Wangari. Um, could you kindly help with the video, please? Um, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we conclude uh, uh, this uh, particular uh, Singapore Convention on Mediation Reading Breakfast uh, Ceremony uh, by reciting the words of the National Anthem in English. O oh God of all creation, bless this our land and nation. Justice be our shield and defender. May we dwell in unity, peace and liberty. Plenty be found within our borders. Thank you very much and good day.